Center. I'm very honored to be part of this Jakarta International GI Endoscopic Symposium. And today I will take this opportunity to present about the recognizing generalized anxiety disorder in irritable bowel syndrome and functional dyspepsia. We know that the pandemic uh, is an emerging and also kind of like a more effects in our daily lives. And also the problems in our medical practice now, it's kind of like a related to the increasing uh, numbers of anxiety problems in our daily practice. I am as a psychiatrist and daily my daily practice in a general hospital see a patient with a hot issue like this and then it is related also to the medical problems related to the gastrointestinal problems and also other problems like uh, cardiovascular problems and diabetes mellitus but the problem is uh, now it's when we call the pandemic and uh, related uh, of the psychiatric problems. We know from the studies recently in the CDC in the United States that there's an increasing amount of uh, anxiety compared to the pre-COVID situations. And it will be more difficult to understand that sometimes we know that this is also related to Indonesian's problems. I have a a report from the Indonesian Psychiatric Associations that uh, conduct the survey during the five months uh, COVID-19 in Indonesia. And it shows that more than 64% of the respondents has a uh, psychological problems. More than that, 71 is female and 20% of males. But the problem is during the pandemic is the increasing amount of anxiety, depression, and traumatic events, it's not only about the psychiatric problems, but it also has some connection with the problems in physical uh, medicines or physical problems itself. So I think uh, we have to consider again, and we have to remind us again, the differences between what is the normal anxiety and the generalized anxiety disorder as a disease entity. We know that when we uh, see a patient with generalized anxiety disorder, the anxiety become constant and it has also some of the symptoms like irritability, insomnia, and difficulty in concentration, but also they have also the some physical uh, symptoms like restlessness, muscle aches, pain, and also the fatigue. And if we see the DSM-5 as a criteria diagnostic for the, all the anxiety, it will be mentioned that we, if the patient have the excessive anxiety and worry more than six months, and it's also difficult to control and has some uh, effects in their daily life and cannot be function well as it before, and sometimes it's more like, like likely to have uh, symptoms more than uh, a psychological symptoms because some of the uh, maybe some of the colleagues said oh, this is only about the symptoms of psychological but in our daily practice we often see that the patients also has some problems not only in the problem related to the psychological but also for the physical problem itself in this Hamilton anxiety rates uh, set a rating scale, it's a battery, it's a, a screening tool for the, uh, the patients that can we define this is a severe, a moderate or uh, mild uh, anxiety problem. There is a kind of like a symptoms related not only to psychological, but also related to the physical problems like cardiovascular symptoms or gastrointestinal symptoms and also the respiratory symptoms like we see in this uh, presentation. In our daily practice, as I mentioned in the Indonesian Psychiatric Associations, uh, we know that the general anxiety depression scale G87 is a very uh, compact and also uh, useful tools 
for us, not as only as a psychiatrist, but also to the general practitioner to define or to differentiate between the two of the anxiety as a disorder or as a normal anxiety itself. So it seems to be uh, not really uh, difficult to define the general anxiety disorder. And maybe in our daily practice, we can give this questionnaire, this battery, a screening tools to the patients while they are waiting in the in the waiting room before we examine the patient. So today, uh, I'm very honored to join the meeting uh, related to the uh, gastrointestinal problems. And I hope this uh, interaction uh, between gut health and psychiatric health that we mentioned before in our uh, previous slide, that there are some of the symptoms that not only related to psychological problems, but also related to the physical problems and also the cognitive problem. So in the past, maybe we just consider the depression as a symptoms of psychological mood. But today we have also considered that this is a kind of like a physical mood and it's also kind of like a hand in hand, especially in the patients of the younger uh, or the younger generation, the millennial age, they have also some of the clinical problem related to, to the cognitive. But today we are going to stress in the stomach problems itself. So a patient who come to the clinic uh, I see every day a uh, lot of patients with also has a symptoms uh, in their stomach or they are this uh, gut and if we see the, the 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 situation and also the studies before we know that 90 percent of the patients uh, with irritable bowel syndrome have at least one comorbid psychiatric illness and like Professor Aziz Rani said about the probiotics, we know that recently there's an, an increasing amount and upraising an uh, awareness about the microbiota, like the Hippocrates said in the in the in the early age of this century that related to the what we eat is what we are going to have in our daily healthy life. But in the absence of also the microbiota and germ-free in the study in or with the mice and mouse and the uh, research it also has uh, some effects in the anxiety problem i know in back in 2017 in in uh, in the world congress of psychiatry in berlin there is a kind of a researchers that connected that uh, the problems of the gut microbiota with the anxiety and depression problems and it also has some effect also in preventing the patients with anxiety related to the gut health problem also. So in our daily practice, we know that the patients with a kind of uh, major depressive disorder has two kinds of uh, symptoms uh, related to the appetite. One is the classic one is what we call the depression with decreased appetite. We know that this kind of patients with the predominant predominantly melancholic depression or classic depression, mood symptoms that uh, has a low mood and also uh, regarding to the problems as uh, sadness, what we call it. But today, uh, especially in the young age, in the millennial, they have also related to the de uh, increased appetite of eating when they have a depression. So what we call in our daily practice life as a psychological eating, they are uh, have a kind of symptom mood disorder but also they have a increasing uh, appetite related to this and the problems uh, of the gut health and psychiatric health i think we know that in our uh, clinical practice the symptoms also related to the stress but our recent studies and our uh, background about relating uh, the serotonin and the dopamine as the neurotransmitter that related to the mood symptoms all produced and synthesized in the gut. So I think uh, with, within the, the acronym, what we call it, the DA or the dopamine and 5-HT, the serotonin symptoms, 
of the problem related to the gut and also if there's something with the gut there will be something with the brain also all the psychological problem so it there in these uh, situations i think the gut health and psychiatric health will go hand in hand and the collaboration between psychiatrists and also others uh, uh, general practitioners and also the internal medicines especially the gastroenterologists will be one of the best uh, collaborations uh, facing these particular uh, patients in our clinical practice. So uh, what is the, the problem uh, with the stress and related to the gut problem? When we see these uh, models, I think that we have to understand again that the visceral uh, hypersensitivity and the neurochemistry of the brain related to the also related to the gut system like the serotonin and dopamine is come from the early uh, stress in the uh, childhood and the model uh, of the rat model and will be really uh, related to the re anxiety the increase is colonic transit the intestinal permeability so when uh, the patient asks me about how can you manage the problem of my uh, anxiety and also the gut system is there any connection i think there is a connection of course there is a connection but the problem is sometimes they don't uh, really understand how is the connection is so this is uh, uh what we call it the the early uh, when we ask about the patient's uh, symptoms of anxiety or disorder of, of uh, mood symptoms, uh, there is a complex uh, situation related to this, uh, you know, the, the basic mechanism of the patients and also have some effects in the, uh, you know, in the prognosis and also the pathophysiology of this, uh, the, the disorder. Because many patients has also many backgrounds. And there is a kind of like a early traumatic uh, related to genetic variations and also the environment. So it can be uh, related to the epigenetic itself. So if we see that this kind of uh, uh, stress, this is the classic uh, model of stress which uh, related to the HPA axis, the cortisol. We know that if we are stressed enough and then the cortisol level will be uh, uprising. But in the meantime, the, the, the problem is uh, we need also the cortisol. If we don't have a cortisol in our uh, body, there will be a trouble also. But how to get more uh, what we call the balancing uh, related to the, uh, the, the problem of anxiety and also the immune systems that also has some problems in our uh, pandemic uh, today. So if we call it in our daily practice uh, we kind uh, like mention the brain gut axis or the gut brain interaction and it is often characterized by the visceral hypersensitivity and gi motility dysfunction these two kinds of uh, problems also of uh, we are facing in our daily practice when we see a patient with ulcer like syndrome or maybe like a, a dysmotility like syndrome they have uh, complaining about bloating or uh, pain relieving and about one third of the general population has some referral center to the psychiatric comorbidity so i think when we see a patient with problem of the anxiety and also the dysmotility like problems related to the gut symptom maybe we have to consider to ask them is there any particular problems or is there any trigger related to the brain uh, to the gut uh, problems or the gut symptom maybe there is a correlations of the depression or maybe there is a comorbid between them so Considering the link between brain and gut, uh, to what extent an uh, irritable bowel syndrome is one of the uh, symptoms that has been very connected to the irritable brain. So we know that sometimes when people say that I am very confused, I am very stressed, and I have a stomach ache, 
and it's also related to the psychological stress and maybe it's the primary event and without any uh, hesitate we can say that because sometimes there is no uh, relation of the other foods or maybe to the you know kind of like a uh, daily activities of the patient but only stress that can trigger the stomach ache symptoms and it's very common in our daily practice as, as general practitioners or in internal medicine specialists. So uh, these are the uh, case study about uh, what, we, I, uh, what we see and maybe it's uh, only about the vignettes uh, uh, studies about what we see in, the, uh, in our daily practice life. Uh, the patients, um, male, uh, 29 years old, complain about the uh, bloating and awful felt that eating become more uncomfortable for them and also after a month of symptomatic treatment uh, there was no significant change the patients uh, has performed a gastroscopic and the result was relatively normal and the treatments uh, the, uh, the symptomatic treatment uh, continued and the problem is the symptom anxiety began in the second month of the patient treatment the patient also felt the symptoms of bloating to this day. All the uh, examinations, uh, supporting examinations like endoscopy, ECG, treadmill, ECG, echocardiography has been conducted to the patients and all findings were relatively normal. And they have been examined also and given symptomatic medication by gastroenterologists, neurologists, cardiologists, and internists because we know that these patients sometimes have, uh, you know, as a custom, you know, has a uh, like a shopping a doctor or doctor shopping. Working diagnosis at this moment is a somatic symptom disorder. I uh, have a differential diagnosis to the generalized anxiety disorder. But because of the patients has been uh, only two months a period of time having anxiety, uh, we have to dig uh, deep inside the patient or whether there is a kind of a history of anxiety disorder before. But the treatment goals is for the patients has a worry about stomach ache symptom, excessive anxiety with anxiety problems like palpitation and shortness of breath, uh, breath and negative thoughts about how uh, become worse and become severe. Uh, and also has a complaining and uh, difficulty in sleeping, I think the relieving the symptoms of anxiety and somatic symptoms will be the best idea for now. So, is there a role of psychopharmacotherapy in functional dyspepsia? From many uh, RCT studies and also uh, many uh, studies before, there is a kind of uh, awareness that the amitriptyline and also all the serotonin uh, medication has some effects in the treatments of the functional gastrointestinal problems. It is because uh, the relationship between there is a positive effects of using serotonin uh, medication to reduce the symptoms of dyspepsia uh, reducing the hypersensitivity and also reducing the problem related to the bloating or even sometimes the ulcer like syndrome. So I think this is one of the ideas that maybe we can uh, put in our mind, in our daily practice, that the small dose of antidepressant, especially the citalopram and the fluoxetine, all uh, are the SSRI medication, is an effective and well-tolerated treatment option to improve symptoms in refractory uh, functional disorder with the minimal side effects and also satisfaction with the patient's daily activity. Some of the patients has still a uh, more uh, likely to uh, use the PPI and the prokinetic as a sim uh, symptom-based uh, medication. And it's very uh, common and it's supporting uh, medication and it's fine. But the symptoms improvement in uh, many uh, of the patients uh, related to the use of medications like SSRI, as, as Isatelopram or Fluoxetine, it's a certain uh, kind of uh, has been very uh, good. And, I think uh, the symptoms remissions 
uh, is more than uh, fifty percent of the average time uh, with the obtain of permissions about was a three or four months. So we are uh, likely to have a patient like this in our daily practice. They complaining about the symptoms of gastrointestinal and also the anxiety problem. And I think uh, using this uh, kind of particular medications is uh, quite beneficial uh, for the patient. Uh, and we have to see the patient also has a comorbid of anxiety itself. So this one of the benefits of the antidepressants in uh, functional dyspepsia, we know in our daily practice, uh, we often see that the amitriptyline and acetylopram as the, uh, you know, as the main uh, use of the medication in our uh, functional dyspepsia. Uh, so we have to differentiate uh, between them. What is the benefit in, 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 in our symptoms uh, related to the patient uh, comparing to amitriptyline and acetylopram? Uh, for the symptoms of delayed gastric emptying, uh, the adequate relief is uh, mentioned that amitriptyline has the adequate relief compared to acetalopram. But if we compare the delayed gastric emptying and dysmotility-like symptoms, it was said that acetalopram and amitriptyline both are improved overall quality of life and the symptom. I know most of the seniors, uh, sometimes they also have uh, prefer to use amitriptyline to the patient with ulcer-like syndrome. And it is best now for that and it's okay still now. But I think uh, we have to consider uh, that the side effects of the amitriptyline in the patients with the uh, cardiovascular problems, uh, we have to be very careful. And also to the patients of uh, male patients uh, above uh, 50 years old patients and using the amitriptyline it is not recommended because it can be trigger the QT prolongations in the heart uh, of the patient. So the role on the depression as a summary that the TCAs were found to work better in patients without depression and anxiety while SSRIs were better for patients with anxiety or depression. So as I mentioned before if we have a patient that has comorbid anxiety and depression, and in sometimes difficult to patient to accept that they, their symptoms of uh, gut problems is related to both the anxiety or depression symptoms of uh, psychological problem. I think it's a wise way also to put on the medications uh, related to the symptoms of anxiety like SSRI for the patients uh, in this particular condition. So these are the, uh, the guidelines in our daily practice for the patients and how can we use uh, some medication related to the SSRIs as an antidepressant or TCAs as an older antidepressant to the patient. So when anxiety and depressions uh, and pubic features uh, are prominent with functional gastrointestinal disorder, maybe we can use the SSRIs, but when there is a predominant uh, pain, maybe we can add some TCAs or amitriptyline as a low dose of amitriptyline. But we have to consider that the patient has also uh, free from the problem of cardiovascular problems. So as a take home message, I think the functional disorder symptoms over interfere with the school work and very uh, much uh, demanding problems in our clinical uh, sim uh, practice. Uh, the FD symptoms management remains challenging. Uh, treatment may include dietary modification, of course, anti-emetic, antispasmodic, prokinetics, and analgesic sometimes. But we, when we see a patient with psychological symptoms or the comorbid of anxiety or depression, maybe we can add some antidepressants like uh, TCAs or uh, the newest drug like SSRIs as the safest one to be shown as some effects from the perspective of the patients and also from the clinical point of view. Both are the uh, recommendations for the patients with uh, anxiety 
point uh, and the problem with depression. But uh, studies found that SSRI like acetalopram will be beneficial uh, compared to TCAs in the patients with anxiety and depression problems. I think uh, that's the presentation for today. I'm very thankful for the opportunity to share this uh, information with you, all the colleagues and professor, and I hope we can discuss these uh, presentations after uh, this uh, session. Thank you very much, Dr. Fauzi.